Hello, hello, we're set to go. Hello, hello, we're set to go. On with the front porch show. It's Dynamo, Magnifico. It's Dynamo, Magnifico. On with the front porch show. We'll share a laugh or two. Big smiles for me and you. Hello, hello, we're set to go. Hello, hello, we're set to go on with the front porch show. John Stevens, <laughs> Frank St. Germain, John Van Gallen. <laughs> We got a great, we got a great encouragement. Anyway, by the way, I'd like to, uh, Lorianne, pan down to here, uh, tilt down to uh, red. Introduce the real star of the show. The real star of the show is in red. There we go. <laughs> okay, we got a real close up there. Real close up there, and, and there we go. Uh, by the way, I, it's your fault. I, it's always my fault. It it's my fault. My wife keeps telling me that. We, up until last weekend, we did not have rain ever on the front porch show. True, true. And Frank, you're partially responsible too. Well, no, you're more irresponsible. I kind of dragged him into it. Yeah, Frank is more irresponsible than responsible. Anyway, that they went and got wet in the, in the thing. And what happened was they come back and Don says this, quote, well, it's so humid tonight. If it's ever going to rain on the front porch show, it should be tonight. Uh, My lips to God's ears, right? What, what can I say? Oh, I'm looking out in the crowd first. Where are people from? Uh, shout out where you're from. Who's uh, who's from far away? Put up your hand. Where are you from? Meadow Lake, Saskatchewan. Meadow Lake, Saskatchewan. Oh, wow. Wow. What brings you to St. Mary's? For the front porch show, of course. Of course, that's right. You came just for the show, correct? My brother lives here. Your brother lives here. Okay, I we see have Frank another, plays some Saskatchewan we have music, but I don't know any Saskatchewan music. Just play something flat. Just play it up. Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan. We all love Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan. We all love Saskatchewan. Next week on iTunes. One more, though. One. One more? Okay, we have others now. Let's talk. Where are you from? Parkdale. Markdale. 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 Oh, ice was in Markdale. Ice cream. Yeah, that's right. Yes. And let me tell you something, John. Can you, you get me, over Frank. here? Uh, Gail and I, my wife and I, we, we used to live in Fletcherton, right. which is right next to Markdale, right? Yeah. We used to go to Markdale for groceries and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, of course, Chapman's ice cream was not as big then as it is now. And when they got their contract with uh, that big uh, independent thing and all that kind of stuff, that really made them. So, welcome, especially uh, from Markdale. Okay, beautiful. Markdale, Ontario. Beautiful place. Yeah, it is. Speaking of where are you from, you know, we have our Facebook and YouTube audience. So, you know, if you're out there, put a little comment on. We're going to check it out later to see where you're from. We know we got people in... California, California and Sweden okay, right. and oh. uh, Saudi, Arabia. Saudi Arabia and Turkey yeah. and okay so we've got people from all over watching us uh, has your talent agent called you yet no uh, he's working hard for me though he'd have to work hard for you <laughs> <laughs> anyways oh, zing where's, where's, where's our rim shot <laughs> Okay, I'm looking at the crowd, and I and I see it's Deanna Pierce. Uphill. Come on down here, Deanna, uh, quickly. Uh, it's only uphill from here. Yeah, yeah. Well, Hi, Deanna. And Deanna, Deanna, tell us, tell us what the project you're working on right now. Well, I'm the area homestay coordinator for Ava Maitland, and we are in need of homestay families. We have um, seven international students coming from Spain and Italy for uh, the school year. They'll be attending St. Mary's DCVI. Yeah. Some for three months, some for the whole school year. And when they come in, it's basically it's like having another son or a daughter, right? It is, yeah. You just walk them into your family and treat them, you know, as wow. part of it. And these kids are on their best behavior. They know that. Of course. They have a lot of rules to follow. Yes. So, and, it, and just to be clear, 
you get a bit of a stipend. You're not sponsoring them. You get some money for it. Exactly, yeah. And how much is that? $700 a month. Yeah. And, and I hear that there's certainly a, a celebrity in town that, that, that is going to be getting an international student. Who is there, that? There is. Well, we're very excited to have three new families this year, one of being John and Marie Stevens. They're going to have a boy from Spain by the name of Emilio. And uh, he's a very musical boy, and uh, I think you're, <laughs> you're both going to really enjoy each other. Well, I think Frank uh, and Frank and a few other friends that, that are musicians, he's going to get quite a welcome. We'll have a night special for him, and he'll join in. What does he play? Everything I heard. The drums. The drums. Oh, yeah. So uh, we can do this song together. Blue Spanish eyes. Teardrops are falling from your Spanish eyes. Okay. Cha, cha, cha. Okay, thank you, Deanna, for coming in. Okay, I just want to say we're Deanna. Can you see me push her off the stage? <laughs> okay. Uh, I think now we go to uh, Don, right? You're doing your... Uh, no, Not yet. Oh, hold it. No, we got, we, hold it. Oh, we got, hold it. Oh, we got, hold it. We got Chris, Col Chris Collins coming in again. Chris, come on in. Hi, Chris. How you okay, doing? Okay, what do you got for us? Hello, hello. The front porch show. Everybody that filled Alexa, the bell out for uh, pizza today. Oh, I love one. I got a special I'm, guest here to pick out. Oh, look at that. My daughter, Lexi. Woohoo! The pizza's donated from Little Caesars. We're from River Runners. Oh, you too. And if you want your pizza hot and fast, call us today. And what do they call you at? Oh, you can visit our website. And I got business cards. And if anybody's looking for a job, call River Runners. Yeah, we are. Johnny, you are? Yeah, you are? yeah. You want, absolutely. Deliver? you want to deliver? Free pizza? <laughs> I got a song for you. River Runners. Call River Runners. If you want a pizza, call River Runners. Perfect. Taylor, did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> Little Caesars. Um, makes their dough fresh every day and they never use frozen vegetables, always fresh cut vegetables so, and the winner is Jack Hodgery <laughs> hope I said that Jack? right Where's Jack? Jack? Come on down oh, Come on down Jack oh, oh, in the back row. Jack, you want a pizza baby? It looks like you don't need one but Come on down. I can meet you halfway Come okay. on All right. Wow, good stuff Jack yeah. So the Pizza Runners, or it's called River Runners. River Runners. Right here. So they're uh, actually doing stuff uh, like skip the uh, dishes and all that, and then and, and they're doing the thing right here locally. So support our local, please support our local uh, companies and, and all this kind of stuff. And their new employee. And my new employee. Yeah, that's right. So if somebody comes here, okay, here's the deal. If I deliver pizza to your house, if you got a piano, I'll play it for you. I got a piano. And I'll, I'll even give you a slice. Order big fat pizza for <laughs> both of us. All right. I'll play your piano. Yeah, for okay. Pizza. Perfect. All right. Piano pizza. Pizza and piano. Who the, who the thought? It's their new career for Frank and myself. Anyways, uh, I need two contestants for alternate facts, and I'm just going to leave it open to you. Come on down right now. Quick. Get on here. Okay, Dad, you gotta come. You gotta come. Here comes Mr. Fisher. Deb, come on down. Come on. Join us. Here comes Chris. I'll play. Oh, Chris will play? Okay, come on. I, I need you over here. Okay. So we've already given away pizza today, so this is just for glory. Glory? Okay? But you know how this game is played. Alternate facts. Over here, Luke. Okay. All right, so uh, we are going to have to introduce you because that's part of the show, but you are... I'm Chris Collins. Chris, do you happen to run uh, a business in town? No, I don't run a business. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Luke, would you like to introduce yourself? I am Lucas Fisher. Hey, Excellent. Luke, what What's your favorite hobby, Luke? Oh, I wonder what it is. Could you guess? You don't, by any chance, have a pole in your hand on these uh, occasions. 
Uh, yes, but uh, thanks for introducing me that way. No, yes, we do love to fish here in St. Mary's. Excellent, excellent. Okay. I wasn't going there, but, you know, uh, you know. Yes, you were. Anyway, so alternate facts means that I have a news story for you. And as, you know, the uh, old uh, adage of alternate facts, meaning, you know, not quite true, uh, you are to, to determine whether this news story is true or, in fact, an alternate fact. So, here's the story of the week. Researchers for the Massachusetts Turnpike Authority found over 200 dead crows near the greater Boston area recently. And they were concerned that they may have died from the avian flu. So a bird pathologist examined the remains of the crows and to everyone's relief confirmed that they had definitely not died of the avian flu. The cause of death appeared to be vehicular impact. However, during a detailed analysis, this is why we you know, have all kinds of government employees. During the detailed analysis, it was noted that the varying color of paint appeared on the bird's beaks and claws, and by analyzing these paint residues, they determined that 98% of the crows had been killed by the impact with trucks, and only 2% were impacted with a car. Rather strange results. So, my question to you, gentlemen, is this true, or is this, in fact, an alternate fact? I am going to go ahead and say that it would be true that they were impacted by trucks and not by cars. Do you have a theory on that? Uh, if it was trucks, I would say it would be transports, and they were much larger, and have a lot more height going down the road, and therefore they would be much more likely to impact the birds. Okay, so you say it's true because trucks are bigger and more likely to impact the crows. Chris, what do you think? I think it's an alternate fact. I think they died from chickenpox. <laughs> <laughs> well, not monkeypox, anyway. Anyway, so I am going to finish this story here for you. Um, so the MTA hired an op ornith ornithological behaviorist to determine if there was a cause for this the disappropriation uh, of uh, truck kills versus cars. And the behaviorist quickly concluded that the cause was that when the crows eat roadkill, as you often see them doing beside a road, uh, they'll have a lookout crow. And whenever that crow sees a vehicle or a car, it would of course call out, car, car. But, but it can't say truck. <laughs> so this is, in fact, an alternate fact. <laughs> wow, alternate facts actually got applause instead of just groans. All right. Uh, keep, okay, keep on trucking. Oh, that was good. Okay, we're coming over here now to do Teddy Bear's Picnic. So, so we got beautiful Lauren. Do an alternate fact. Oh, oh goodness. No, sorry. Uh, no, you're right. We're yes, doing we're doing teddy bear's picnic. Lauren, I'm sorry. I jumped out of you. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Find the seat of our pants. Here we go. <laughs> okay. It's yeah. This is what live television does to you. Gives you gray hair. <laughs> okay. It's coming back. By the way, everybody, it is coming back. After a hi hiatus of two years, correct? Right. Two years, St. Mary's is having, once more, a teddy bear picnic. Let's hear for it. John, yes. I got a song for teddy oh, bear. I bet you do. Ready? Yes. Turn me on a little bit here. Oh, 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 baby, let me be your loving teddy bear. Put a chain around my neck, leave me anywhere. Oh, let me be, oh, let me be. You're just a bad, bad, bad. 
Okay. Um, I thought you were going to go when you go out in the woods today, you know, because that's Teddy Bear's picnic. But anyway, that's okay. Anyways, we have Marlene Foreman. She is the brains and the brawn and everything. Yes, Marlene. Them. All right. Are you, a, just out of curiosity, are you a committee of one? Yeah. <laughs> You're a committee of one. Until the day out, and then I have helpers. Yeah, but basically you organize the whole thing. Yep. That's a lot of work. Yeah. How long does it take you to organize it? Oh, a few months. <laughs> a few months. <laughs> a few late nights. Because you have a job you go to every day as well. Yeah, yeah. Six days a week, correct? Six days a week. Six days a week. Oh, man. So how did it, how and when did all this start? Okay. It has been, I don't think I'm on it. It's been on for 35 years. It would have been 37 had we had not had COVID. But it's been on for 35 years. Uh, John Bennett was the first one that started it in St. Mary's and she left for college and left it to my dad and the Lions Club carried it on for several years and then my dad took over. My dad was 86 when he passed away and in his will he left that I carry on the Teddy Bear reunion. Thank you dad, <laughs> but it's been great. <laughs> So, so tell me about this year's event. What, what, what's happened and, and what's gonna, how is it going to be different? Okay, um, this year we're not doing a couple of things because of COVID that happened. So we're not having our snow cones and whatnot. Other than that, we're having everything the same. We have a miniature pony coming for our parade with my granddaughter. She's bringing uh, her miniature pony. We're having pony rides. We're having uh, the uh, jumping castles. Uh, we're having our games the same as always, the train ride, uh, real pony rides, and we're hoping it's going to be a success this year. It's just like starting all over again, yeah. but we're, we're hoping for a good crowd. Yeah. Now, prices have gone up for the things you have. Our prices there. have gone up. They're a toony this year. For 35 years, they were a loony, but our prices have all gone up. It's costing us a lot more to put it on uh, because everybody has put their prices up. So, hopefully, it'll go just the same as always and go well and um, hope to see a lot of people there. So if somebody came into Cascade and said, look, I'd like to contribute something towards a teddy bear thing, you, you wouldn't toss them out, would you? No, always, always. And uh, th there's a lot of uh, dealerships and big businesses in town that do donate to help us carry this on. It does cost a lot to carry it on. It costs about $5,000 to put it on for the day. And um, some people don't realize what things cost, but it does, and um, we do um, buy bears for the hospital. Yeah, great. And, and how, how many bears do eventually, do you, you've got a number on that? Uh, no. no, a lot. No, just a lot. Just a lot of yeah. bears, okay. Uh, part of this is, that part of the whole fun of this is that children can bring their stuffed animals. Yes. And they can get them fixed. It's not just bears, it could be anything. Um, we do, yes, we will repair anything. John, we will repair your dog. Yeah, I tried to find my dog. It's in a trunk and my wife was away, so oh, dear. I couldn't bring it in. Well, we can always bring him at any time. But yeah. we do have the bear repair, which is, does cost nothing. And, and professionals do this, right? Yeah. Yep. Who are the people that prepare the bear? Um, we have a couple of sewers that that uh, will fix them up. So you're, not, you're talking about quality work? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And everybody, every chi everybody who has a child has a bear that's been, you know, I don't know, really used a lot. Beat up a bit. Beat up a bit. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to use that word, but still. Uh, well, again, uh, give us a rundown again again of where and when this is going to happen. Okay, next Sunday, uh, the parade starts at the high school. It's just a little parade for the kids, and we go over to the East Ward Park, and that's where everything goes on. We do have a judging contest for the kids, which will be in the paper this week to tell you exactly what the contests are. We have a uh, great prizes for the judging contest of those that want to enter. Yeah, and it's quite a competition. I, it I, is, it, it is. Yeah. And some people go like, all oh, out. Yes. They, they get competitive. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I've been to several teddy bear picnics, and both alone and with children, and I've enjoyed it as a big kid, big kid, and I've enjoyed it watching the other little children. So it's one of my favorite events of the year, and make sure you come out to this edition. Marlene, thank you for coming. Uh, no, there you, uh, hey, hey. Uh, I've been sitting up here with you guys the uh, whole time. And, uh, who are you? No one's asked me a single thing. Who am I? Yeah, I'm who a are you? Bear right here. You can see me just fine. I'm feeling very, very good right now. What, what, what are you interrupting our interview for? Well, this whole darn thing is about me. I'm the teddy bear. And what's your name? What do you mean, what's my name? Marlene, will you tell this man what my name is? His name's Clifford. 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 Yeah. 
My name is Clever. Okay, well, what, what do you like best about the teddy bear's picnic? The food, of course. <laughs> I'm a food. bear. I ain't got no teeth, though, so I'm a gummy bear. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, I never really eat a lot because I'm already stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I, I got my attention. That's all I needed. Okay. You guys carry on with your interview. Oh, now. here we go. This is uh, this is CJ the bear. This is CJ the bear who has traveled around the world in memory of my dad, and he's gone many, many places. He's been to Barbados, Jamaica, um, Italy. Holland, and this year he actually went to um, BC, and he just got back from California with the um, with friends of uh, of ours that went to California, and the kids took him, and he had a great time there, and he was with the Smith family. Okay. Well, I'm going to give make a deal with you right here and right now. Uh, early next year, Marie and I are actually going to physically go around the world. We're going to go to Japan. We're going to go to Vietnam, Cambodia. Thailand, Turkey, France, Belgium, and England. So I will so take this bear. So he's going on and, a big trip. Oh yes, and we'll see this bear in front of the Eiffel Tower. Uh, I'll take photos and we can put them up on Facebook. And, okay. and there you go. So Very thanks good. for coming in. Yes. He was lost. I might add that he was lost when he went to Iceland. Terry Todd took him to Iceland, and he was in his backpack. Somebody stole him, and um, the government sent him back to me. <laughs> so they found him out in the woods. <laughs> if you go out in the woods today. <laughs> okay, well, okay. thanks, uh, Frank. Take us into community calendar, okay? Now, well, Ron Bear, love little white dove, will love the blue sky. Ron Bear, love little white dove, will love that will never. Here's Lauren. Thank you, Frank. Edie Fisher. Yes. And thank you, Marlene. I have very fond memories of Cliff, your father, growing up. So, this week's community calendar. Tomorrow at 7.30 p.m., the St. Mary's Horticultural Society presents the Festival of Flowers show open meeting at the St. Mary's Legion. Speakers are Dawn and Donna Stevens, and the topic is Container Gardens. Membership is not required to attend. And the St. Mary's Museum will continue with Melodies at the Museum this Wednesday, August 17th, from 7 to 8 p.m., located right here at Cadzo Park. This week is featuring the musical stylings of Jaron Camp and Rachel Frankreiter, also known as the York Street Thought Process. And this event will continue each Wednesday throughout August. Admission is by donation. And finally, the St. Mary's Station Gallery presents Gary Austin's Painting with Pixels, opening Friday, August 19th at 7 p.m. and continues until October 1st. Painting with Pix Pixels is a retrospective of photography that traces Austin's work from the early stages of portrait photography through the manipulation of the form and content into heightened reality and abstraction. The show is not to be missed. And that is all for your community calendar this week. Have a wonderful week ahead. Isn't, isn't that Lauren e. Fisher? Isn't she something? Painting with pixels. Painting with pixels, yes. There's a song there somewhere. I, there must be, and you're going to probably invent uh, one. Painting with pixels. Oh. Painting with pixels. Pixels, I'm just painting with pixel pixels, painting with pixels, painting with pixels, I'm just painting with pixels. Join in, John. <laughs> painting with pixels, painting with pixels, I'm just painting, painting with pixels, painting with pixels, painting with pixels. Okay, I'm okay. Just painting, uh, painting okay, we got right, 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 the right, right, <laughs> Before I embarrass myself too much. Okay, I, I did a bit of research here, and I didn't know that skateboarding has been around since the 1950s. It started in California, and uh, 
in a, it's been a few years since St. Mary's got its first skateboard park. And now we have a store in town, and we have quite a following in St. Mary's. We now have a store in town that recently opened called Square One Skate Shop. Say that five times. <laughs> Here to talk about the sport is Scott LeBlanc, owner of Square One. Welcome, Scott. Everybody's been surfing. Surf, surf St. Mary's way. Surf, baby. Okay. Does this work? Yeah, yeah. we're working, we're good. We got our microphone working great. Uh, I, I see you're going to show us a bit about the sport, but first let's chat a little. Uh, when did you personally start skateboarding? I was 11, actually. Pretty young guy. Uh, skated only for, honestly, like four years before I quit for a long hiatus. A couple years ago, I was like, you know what, let's pick it back up, and sure enough, I'm better than I ever was. <laughs> and what, what, what got you interested in the sport, and what got you back to it? Uh, I think, you know, with everything being closed last year, we couldn't do a lot of things. We all love music, going to the gym. This was the easiest thing, kind of get me out and about again. And So are we going to see you with 70 years old going... <laughs> if my body can hold up, you will. <laughs> well, yeah. it's definitely not the sport for me, right, Don? <laughs> I don't know any sport that is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I play tennis with Don, and I, I, yeah, okay. Tell me about the skateboarding community in St. Mary's. It's actually a lot younger than your typical skateboard community in most places because it's so new, right? So we don't have too many older riders like myself, so everybody's in the teenage area, so it's kind of cool. I get to kind of shape it the way I want it to be. Yeah. A lot more, uh, it seems to be a little bit more respectful in ways, yeah. and, uh, I like the fact that it's a younger, youthful crowd. Keeps me feeling youthful too. <laughs> now, we're, there are plans to expand in our skateboard park. It's been around how many years? Do you know exactly how many years? About eight, nine, eight years? I think eight, eight years. Eight years or so, yeah. And I know um, Carrie Pope had a lot to do with the initial one. She was yeah. really pushing for it. She did. And we uh, had a lot thanks of fun to Carrie. Reading. Let's hear it for Carrie for just getting the skateboard park. Uh, and uh, it, you know it's great, but it needs to it needs to grow, right? It does. It, it, you know, it would help the community in large, not just me, not just the kids. It would actually bring people from all outside of this town into this town. You know, right now I get people come to my shop. They're like, "Where do I go to skate?" I'm like, "I'd maybe go to Stratford, honestly." <laughs> but not 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 soon, though. No, that's the thing. Soon, I'd like to be able to promote our own park. So, what are you going to add to it? We got half pipe, possibly. A we, we were going to do a... Who a, understands what he's talking about? I have no idea what, I have, I have no idea what a half pipe is. <laughs> yeah. So there's what is called a pump track. It's going to be a track outside of the skate park, more for the scooters, actually. Yeah. Kind of keep them from running into each other. Yeah. Skaters and scooters sometimes don't mesh well together. Yeah. So <laughs> when, you, when you get this ultra super skateboard park, then, uh, you're going to actually be able to have competitions. Because right now it's not competition ready, right? I've had one already, and we've made do with it, but it would definitely bring more of a crowd in. And, and better skaters. A hundred percent. Yeah, and I think that's what it's all about. I think, again, when you're doing it with any sport, if you, if you don't see the best, you don't know what the best is. Exactly. And the way you bring the best in is to have a skateboard park that really gives them a challenge. So how? In, well, what's the timeline on this thing? Honestly, I would like to do it in phases. I'm not sure if that is the the actual plan, but mm -hmm. I know Stratford did it in phases, and it was better that way because that way you can kind of see, you know, as it grows, you know, each part to kind of keep people excited. Rome wasn't built in a day, and to get a three hundred thousand dollars skate park right away, that's pretty hard. You right. Know? <laughs> uh, so you know, you're passionate enough about this to open a shop. Yeah. Uh, okay. So so tell me about that. It was kind of what I hit on earlier, you know, a couple of years ago, I was sitting around a lot, I wasn't able to play shows, I used to be in a band, I played music for most of my life, couldn't do that anymore, I used to go to the gym almost all the time, I saw Rob all the time there, I couldn't do that anymore, so I was like, holy, I got all this free time, what am I going to start doing? <laughs> Picked this up, and after a few lumps, I started getting it back, Yeah, it took a while. So, so what's in your store that people can buy? Everything you see here, everything you see basically on me right now, I sell shoes, I sell skateboards, wheels, hats, bearings, clothing, any clothing you think of, shirts, sweaters, okay. tank tops. I'm not going to go there with the clothing. But <laughs> <laughs> everything. Everything. Uh, you, you, now, when I, you have many models uh, in the store. 
tell me about the different models of boards and, and what kind of thing. If I was going in to buy a skateboard, uh, I would have one with training wheels, I think, but still, <laughs> and, and maybe a walker associated. But what, what kind of considerations do, do people have when they buy a board? Usually the first main consideration is the width. A lot of people like to know how wide the board is because usually it depends on the size of the foot. I'm not a good example of this because normally people with big feet don't like a skinny board. I like a skinny board. Mm -hmm. But my toes often will touch the ground because of it. Normally it'll be the width, sometimes the length. They measure the width, the length, they even measure the shape. Sometimes they'll have what's called a shovel shape where it doesn't even, this is called a popsicle. Mm -hmm. Go figure. But a uh, shovel shape is more of a flat bottom, more of a wide top. But yeah, uh, it comes different sizes, different sizes of trucks, different kinds of wheels, hardness, softness, so many variables. So, so I'm, a, I'm a father, I'm not really, but if I were a father and I, and I want to take my, my son in or grandson or whatever, uh, you'd be able to basically sit down with that and come up with the perfect board for them, correct? 100%. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as opposed to just going someplace, you can give advice on what to buy, as opposed to just going someplace and buying it. Yeah, and you know, the funny time, I'll even have parents sometimes come in thinking, well, they know what the best thing is, and I'll have to sometimes often correct them, even be like, sorry, I actually should maybe get that. Yeah. <laughs> I know I, my sport was baseball and softball. Yeah, and, and I know that parents often, when the kid's like six years old, they come in and buy the biggest glove they can, and it's, it's just not appropriate. No. So it's the same with skateboards. you got to get something that's appropriate for the, for the child. Exactly. And for the adult, you, you know, actually for the adult. So if now skateboarding, and some of you may not know, how many people know that skateboarding is now part of the Olympics? Okay, a fair people. So many people don't. It was the last, in 2020, it was as part of the Olympics. What has that done to the sport? It's actually uh, introduced to, I would say the female crowd has actually like grown tremendously, probably about like three times since that year. And it's so young that it's insane. These girls are anywhere from 10 to 15. All the men are in their 30s. So it's crazy to see some of these young girls out there shredding just as hard as some of the, some of the men. Yes. Yeah, well, again, we've seen that with, with a few sports that, that women are, our, and of course, our women's soccer team. Hey, how about them? They won the gold medal. Yeah. You know, so that's wonderful. And uh, so, uh, how does uh, you give lessons, right? Yep. Now your lessons are forty dollars an hour, yeah. but but if you got uh, you know ten kids that came together to have a one hour lesson, then it's forty dollars for the yeah. ten kids, right? So yeah, you, you, can, group. you can get a group of friends together, and it, you don't have to pay the forty hours forty dollars an hour unless you want a private lesson, but if you want to get a group of friends together, you know, you can do it all together and still pay the $40 fee, so Absolutely. it's a great thing. And uh, so uh, that's great. So how does somebody sign up for lessons? You can either message me on my Facebook, message the, the store's Facebook. You can either even just come into the shop. I can say up a time. It's Monday, Tuesdays, usually around 4 p.m., and, you know, I usually have an opening, even if it is. But we got forty bucks. Okay, we, we got, got forty, 40 bucks. Just a minute. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Okay, Gail, get out the crutches. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Come on, Frankie. Uh oh. <laughs> Together? Is this right? Is this right? I don't know, boys. Just a minute. This, is this our first lesson here? I think the first lesson is What's the don't first try lesson? it. No, no, let's... let's oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, get, get 911 somebody already. <laughs> oh! Oh! We knew that would happen. Don has brought what? Oh, yes, but Scott has brought some... Now that we get this, uh, these guys off the stage, we, Scott has brought some people... I do have I do have somebody. Yeah, to Scott this. has brought some people in here. We're not going to show you how this can be done. So where are they? Come on in. Come on down. Now yes, you can if you want any surfers here. Okay, my my heart was in my mouth there. I too. Yeah. That was beautiful. I think the song you should be playing is "Sand in the Clowns." <laughs> so Josh is actually a perfect example here because Josh only started a couple of years ago and went from rather clumsy and new on his board to now he's, I'd honestly say, better than myself. So He got lessons from me and my friends basically every time we skateboard together. and He's grown tremendously. He's a little athlete too, so that helps obviously. 
So, Josh, you want to try popping a few tricks for us? It's going to be like hard to roll on this stuff, but like, that's all right. We got excuses. <laughs> that's just an ollie right there. We could do some music. Got some music for us. is that this surface isn't the same type of surface they use. It's, a, it's quite pebbly, so it's a yeah. bit more difficult. You slide a lot. <laughs> so it's a little hard to show some of the stuff you normally would do, but... That was a good one. Hey. Don, you can do that. Sure. You want to try again? <laughs> <laughs> it might be 120 no, bucks. No, later. no, we don't, we don't have them trying anymore. <laughs> Ooh. I'll try a tech clip before I hurt myself. Oh, oh you see, we're not the only ones. <laughs> I see, I told you. <laughs> you know, I was going to say, you know, you turn, you turn the mic up a little bit here, because I, I just want to say to these guys, this is. This is a great little thing. You know, when I was younger, uh, it was basically roller skates, okay? Remember roller skates that you had to clip on and all that kind of stuff? And I thought that was pretty cool. I was an ice hockey player, too. But when I see these guys and girls skateboarding, it's fantastic. Because the, the amount of balance that you need, the, the amount of coordination that you need... It's incredible, okay? Oh. From an old fart like myself and Don yeah. and if John. I, if I can say something, Frank, yes, you're right. It's, you need a lot of a coordination, something that you and Don don't have. Well, I didn't see you get on. Uh, no, I have medical reasons I'll not to. Right <laughs> We're not the only guys who <laughs> fell, Don. <laughs> that's right. The pros fall, too. The okay, go ahead, too. brother. Okay, so anyways, that's about it. Uh, thanks like for it. coming in. You get it. Once more, Scott, tell us about Square One Skate Shop. When, where it is, and when it's open. Um, actually, you're right up where this old source location was at Six Jones. I'm open. Try it again, brother. I'm open 12 to 6, Wednesday to Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday, I'm open 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay. Now you too can break your neck by yeah. doing that. This, 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 certainly, I gotta apologize. This, this surface is not the surface they play on. It's pebbly and it makes a, it doesn't have the same feel that the skateboard park would have. But we're getting uh, additions to our skate skate our skateboard park. There we go. So Scott, we look forward to seeing the expansion and tournaments and stuff like that. And who knows, we may eventually have an Olympic champion that comes from yeah. St. Mary's. Wouldn't that be marvelous? And if we do, Scott, it would be one reason would be your influence on the sport. Thanks for coming in, Scott. Thanks, Thank Scott. you, Scott. Dr. the bomb. Okay, now we're going over to Frankie, and you have a musical guest, correct? I don't know, do we? Yes, we do. Well, I'm here, aren't I? Yeah, uh, you better turn the mics up here a little bit, okay? Where's the audio there? There you go. Works great. It's, uh, that was a lot of fun. That was great. You know, and, you know, a lot of people just to get away from skateboard, or skateboard, not get away, but for one second, uh, her, uh, his shop is right downtown uh, St. Mary's, right on the corner where the source used to be, right? Is that where your shop is? How about a nice hand for these skateboarders, too, okay? Uh, Don and I were the prime example of what not to do when you get our age and try to skateboard. Anyway, to change the things around, our musical guest tonight is Daniel Kennedy. How about a nice hand for Daniel? And uh, we're going to do the first song here. It's called On the Street Where You Live. Now, the reason why you picked this one out, Daniel, was why? Well, I mean, we did have a little bit of struggle trying to find a song that you knew, but... <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Daniel! <laughs> I actually perform this one um, in this my day. vocal interpretation performance class. Um, I go to St. Clair College for Musical Theater, so this is one of the pieces I've just been working on last year. 
Okay, so your aspiration as a singer would be to continue your, uh, obviously, singing career in musicals, mostly? Absolutely. I love theater so much, and that's all I've ever wanted to do. So, I'm hoping maybe Broadway, maybe Stratford Festival. Crossing <laughs> fingers for me. <laughs> so you never want to be the lead singer of a band like Queen? I mean... If it came along and it paid, then yeah, absolutely. Oh, but. there you go, baby! <laughs> well, let's do the song. It's a beautiful song, and uh, we're, we'll talk a little more in between uh, before the next number. You guys having a good time so far? <laughs> See, uh, what I like to uh, say right now is the fact that, you know, the Front Porch Show has been on, this is our, what, sixth, sixth year. Sixth season? Sixth season. Right, and uh, we like to keep it going with your support. It's fabulous, and that's why we can, you know, actually put people like this on stage. Well, yeah, at the stage and all that kind of stuff, and and showcase the talent that we have here in St. Mary's. You ready? Absolutely. <laughs> Often walked down this street before, but the pavement always stayed beneath my feet before. All at once am I several stories high, knowing I'm on the street where you live. Are there lilac trees in the heart of town? Can you hear a lark in any other part of town? Does enchantment pour out of every door? No, it's just on the street where you live. And all the towering feeling just to know Any second. 
second you may suddenly appear. People stop and stare. They don't bother me. For there's nowhere else on earth that I would rather be. Let the time go by. I won't care if I can be here on the street where you an upcoming star, there's no doubt about it, right? You agree? Absolutely. Yeah. Right, you know, there's, uh, there's velvety voices and, you know, Rob Ebney, uh, one of the co-producers of this show and all kinds of stuff, sings very well and I sing okay. But there's uh, certain times in our lives that we hear a, a nice little voice uh, like yourself. And I say little voice, meaning it's a big voice. <laughs> And we sang it in a little way. So, I mean, he's capable of doing a lot more with his voice. So this time, we're going to do... You want to hear one more? Yeah. yeah. I don't hear you. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Okay, so, you know, the, we don't know who's watching this. Could be uh, uh, some people in Sweden, you, you, whatever, and all that kind of stuff. So let's do a little cabaret. Is that okay? Absolutely. And what we'll do is uh, get the crowd to kind of clap along once we get into it. Is that okay with you guys? We're having fun tonight? Okay, so let me see if I remember it. Uh... <laughs> Yeah. Down the 
show we're just all ready to get into the closing song but I'd like to thank a lot of people for coming in first Marlene Foreman it's here for Marlene don't forget Teddy Bears picnic next Sunday afternoon and we have it's what Marlene what park is it in it's not here where is it what's that East Ward Park yes thank you Scott LeBlanc and let's hear for Daniel Kennedy and of course, as always, we'd like to thank the town of St. Mary's. Uh, they generously allowed us to use the audio equipment. And of course, here we are at Cadzo Park. And we'd like to, to also thank the Rotary Club because we're still using that camera they let us have. So the iPad. So let's hear it. Frank, it's time to take us home. Okay, it's been a great show. How about a nice, nice hand for all our, our, our guests again? And thank you for supporting the show. Uh, numbers may be down this year because of the, uh, you know, COVID and all this kind of stuff, whatever. But, you know, we don't look at the numbers. We look at the smiles on people's faces. We look at all this kind of stuff that really is what we're all about here in St. Mary's and all our volunteers. How about a nice hand for all our volunteers here? I mean, these people do it for absolutely zero. Uh, including myself and well I think Don Van Gallen gets a few bucks we'll do that. <laughs> hey, star power star power <laughs> I was born in Ontario place to stay and a place to grow the 